Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Somalia's capital is once again targeted by a fatal car bombing. At least 10 people are killed in an explosion that goes off reportedly as a security meeting is being held at a nearby hospital. Also, Gabon's in the final stretch of a tense wait for the results of a closely fought presidential election race. Opposition frontrunner Jean Ping and incumbent Ali Bongo both accuse each other of fraud and are certain of their impending victory. And giving voice to the women so often forced to silence. We meet some of the Central African Republican female journalists trying to tackle the deeply rooted sexual inequality in the country. Well, first, Somalia's capital was once again hit by a deadly attack that's been claimed by al-Shabaab extremists. At least 10 people were killed when a car bomb went off outside the presidential palace on Tuesday. Nicolas Chemin has more. The bomb exploded during a morning traffic jam near the presidential palace. It damaged two hotels where security officials were holding a meeting. The noise was heard across the city. Several people were killed. Many others were wounded. Al-Shabaab were quick to claim responsibility. The jihadist group has increased its attacks in Mogadishu in recent months. The mood of the residents of the city is quite uh, tense, and uh, some people actually uh, accused government uh, security agents of security laps, uh, which they said actually allowed militants to increase attacks uh, across the city in recent months. Al-Shabaab were pushed out of Mogadishu in 2011. But since then, they still carry out sporadic attacks against the government and the 22,000-strong African Union AMISOM peacekeeping force. There are now fears that al-Shabaab will step up their attacks ahead of the presidential election, which will take place on October the 30th. Well, in Gabon, the countdown to the final results from Saturday's presidential election has been marked by tension and tit-for-tat accusations of fraud by the frontrunners. The main opposition candidate, Jean Ping, is trying to topple incumbent Ali Bongo, whose family has been running the country for well on five decades. Both camps are certain they'll win, and both claim the others tried to rig results that are due out shortly. Their concerns that whatever the outcome, unrest could follow. But as officials, officials delayed the announcement Tuesday night, many Gabonese were eager for the wait to end. We are all calmly awaiting the results. Our only demand is that the Electoral Commission tell us who has legitimately won. The people of Gabon are a peaceful people. We are just waiting for the Commission's announcement, calmly, and expect the defeated candidate to accept the results. In any case, the people of Gabon are the winners, not this candidate or the other. Whichever candidate it is elected, he will not be the winner. This is a victory for Gabon. We want change. Change is what this country needs. Then we will celebrate. We are ready to celebrate victory. We didn't go through all of this for nothing. I can't vote and be told it was for nothing. As a Gabonese citizen, I am slightly disappointed by the fact that we should have had the result by 5 o'clock and they are just pushing it back bit by bit. And of course, the longer the delay gets, the more we wonder about possible fraud, if there are any complications or any ongoing negotiations. We just hope whoever gets elected will come with the best intentions for the people and help Gabon towards progress. Well, former Malawian Justice Minister Rafael Kasambara has been sentenced to 13 years in prison with hard labor for a conviction of conspiracy to murder. His intended victim, a former budget director in the Ministry of Finance, survived a shooting in 2013. The attack uncovered institutional corruption in the public system during the administration of President Joyce Banda. It's estimated that fraud could cost the country up to $250 million. Well, more than a year after they were jailed for their opposition to any bid by President Kabila to extend his term in office, and three Congolese pro-democracy campaigners have been freed this week. They were let out late Monday. The trio's free... Late Tuesday, excuse me. Now, the trio's freedom was ordered by the DR Congo's Supreme Court. Tensions have been growing in the country over fears that Kabila might try to push back elections due later this year. 
as a maneuver to try and stay on in power beyond the terms of his current mandate. While well, Christopher Goy, Fred Baumer and Eve Makwambala are out, but say that they are not done with speaking up just yet. It's just not enough. We are the fifth or sixth persons to be released as a proof of easing of tensions by the government. It's good. I really believe it's important. But the easing of tension must be more than just freeing prisoners. It's useless to free prisoners if the aim is to throw more in jail the next day. So these measures must really guarantee the right to protest, but also freedom of speech. Opponents must be free to move and free to hold meetings. I will fight until the day I die for more justice, more human dignity and more human fairness around the world. According to the UN, the Central African Republic is one of the world's worst countries when it comes to gender equality. During sectarian violence between 2013 and 2015, reports of sexual violence towards women soared. But the victims' stories themselves and gender-sensitive news in general rarely makes it to the national headlines. Well, a small but determined group of women are now trying to change that. Our correspondent, Katerina Vitozzi, sent this report from the capital, Bongi. Prudence Yamase is a Central African journalist. Today, she's working on a story about sexual assault. Her interviewee, 38-year-old Lucinda, is a victim of multiple gang rape. The interview will appear on Prudence's blog. Her work takes her across the capital into areas where security is still a problem. She says the authorities also target women journalists. I was in the 8th district covering the elections. A policeman took away my recorder because he didn't think I was up to covering the elections. There is always this prejudgment in society that women journalists are not up to the task. Some journalists believe a lack of support for women reporters means gender-sensitive stories don't make the headlines. In 2015 alone, the UN estimates there were more than 30,000 cases of sexual violence against women in the CAR. Journalist Elise Lugo says it's an undercovered topic. These are delicate topics that are still taboo to talk about, and I think that a woman will be more open to talk about this to another woman because she thinks the woman will understand her feelings more than a man would. So that's why I think it is still underreported. A handful of international NGOs have provided money and training to boost the number of women in the media. But journalists like Gladys Guimari are concerned there are not many young women following in her footsteps. You can count the number of female journalists on one hand. There aren't very many of us, so that's a problem. We have to find ways to motivate young women because many people think that if you're a woman in the media, you're not going to see your family and things like that. It puts people off because that's just how it is in Africa. The CAR is still in a delicate post-conflict period. These women want to make sure their voices and those of other women are heard during its recovery. That report there by Katerina Vitotti. Well, that is the what we're going to have to leave it for now for Eye on Africa. Remember, you can always catch up with the stories featured in today's bulletins and our past editions by checking out France 24's website, where you can also get up to date with the headlines from around the world. That's www.france24.com. Otherwise, do keep tuning in to Eye on Africa when you have a chance. I'd love to have you. Take care. Thank you.